okay and i'm very happy to see everybody take interest and gather here to learn let's just see let's just give a couple of minutes to see if anybody else is joining and then we'll be starting So I have Mr. Mohammed Azam, Varad, Manan, Nukul, Zayprakash, Somendra, Likit, Lakshya, Shrata, Yuvraj, and Neha, right? And I think Pankti is not there today. Tvarita is not there today. Nandini is not there. Hussain will be joining us later. Manan has joined in, right? Abhirup is not there. Okay, just give me a second, students. Now, technical general um, is very exciting. Okay, why is it exciting, technical general? I will tell you. Okay, what are the things that you're going to learn in technical general? I will tell you. I'm going to show you a flow chart today of what all things you will be learning. Technical in the subject as we call it as technical general all right and it's going to be a very short session today so just give me a second okay getting a couple of things sorted until then i would share or i would rather want you to share what do you think comes under technical general okay so let's start with mohammed azam so technical general means the technical general technicalities of the aircrafts and what and all different equipments we have in aircrafts and how the users of the aircraft and what are the benefits and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the equipments in the aircraft and what are the benefits of the equipment? Is that what you're trying to say? Come, sir. Good, good. Neha, what do you think? Wild guess. Anything that you can set your mind to. Think about it. Principles of flight or something like that. Very good. Principles of flight. Very accurate. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? Zay Prakash, what do you think? What is technical? Technical general like uh, think about it zay prakash airframes and uh, like uh, systems principles of flight yeah. alternate current and uh, direct current like radio mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Propagation. Mm -hmm. Okay. About something about electricity and electric currents. All right. Okay. I'm getting one one key point from everyone. Nukul, how about you? Uh, sir, it's a study of whole aircraft, how it works, how engine works, and how the electronic equipment inside the aircraft working. And uh, I think uh, aerodynamic also included. Mm -hmm. How the engine, how the aircraft, aerodynamics. Okay. So, Mendra, how about you? 
sir i feel it's the study of different parts of the aircraft which are responsible for the functioning of the aircraft when it is on the ground or on the air study of different parts of the aircraft right that's what you're saying right correct mm -hmm. okay and how different parts work in different ways. okay all right manan how about you i think uh, technical general uh, it's like uh, general principles how the aircraft works like a uh, lift drag and uh, what the uh, airplane consists like flaps rudder how it works very good very nice all keywords mentioned pratik how about you what do you think uh, i think how does the aircraft work what are the technical principles and on on which the aircraft and different parts of the aircraft are how does the aircraft work and what are the technical principles and how do different parts work correct okay great students i'm i'm of course not everybody i have not asked everyone but majority of you all what you have said somewhere you have some idea about what we are going to study now one of the most uh, most difficult things when it comes to learning technical general is that there is no one textbook that you can follow like navigation will give you one textbook or two textbooks regulations will give you metrology will give you but technical doesn't give you that so it becomes very difficult for the student to realize what is going to be a part of technical technical general even if you don't clear the dgca cpl ground paper for technical general even though you don't clear it you can still apply for the cpl license if you have air regulations and metrology navigation and rtr license with the class 1 medical those are five requirements along with of course successful flight training from an approved school and all your flight logs entered into the logbook all those five to six things when you have gathered you can apply to get your cpl license once you get your cpl license you know, you can apply to get jobs but what happens is if you don't study technical then you don't know anything about the aircraft as a uni body or as a body in itself all these days you have been learning about navigation as to how to navigate finding directions headings track rate of descent radio bearings and so much more magnetism variation deviation and so much more you have studied calculated that is when you are inside the cockpit of the aircraft but you have not learned anything or i would say not learned much about how actually the aircraft behaves in flight and then what are the different systems apart from the instruments that we use in navigation so in navigation you study about altimeter air speed indicator gyros and then dmes ils vors and other instruments vsis mac meters and so on are they a part of technical general no why do we call it general basically we call it general because it gives us general knowledge general knowledge let's talk about not an aircraft but a car a car from the inside has a steering wheel a car has a lot of instruments speedometer rpm air conditioning music radio indicators and so on it's a very simple machine a car from the outside looks like a small box with some windows where people can look outside doors to get inside inside it has seats air conditioning so together we understand that everything from outside inside make up a car when it comes to an aircraft you have to have a similar approach but the systems are not that simple in a car the whole engine area in which the engine is housed it has many more instruments inside 
there's an alternator in the car carburetor generators water coolant this and that all those things that you cannot see somebody who is doing automobile engineering will have to learn all that because if a car is not starting they need to point out why is the car not starting and technical general covers topics like that if an aircraft engine is not starting what could be the problem now as a pilot it's not your responsibility to open the engine and find out the problem okay as a pilot it is not your job you will be given an aircraft that is fit to fly you just have to fly who does all this checking the aircraft maintenance engineers they do all these checks they will not give you an aircraft if it is not going to be in a working condition but then is it important for us to study all these systems yes what are these systems so technical general we call it general because it's general knowledge applicable to all types of aircraft in the world what is the importance why do we need to study it if we don't need it for cpl license it is important for your airline entry exams when you will have vacancies you will see thousands and 5000s of people applying for a vacancy the airlines cannot afford to have one on one interviews for all those thousands of people so the first thing that they do is they ask everybody to take a written test generally it's of 100 uh, it's for 100 questions 100 marks it's mcq based over there 50% of the content comes from technical general and other 50% we could say comes from little bit of regulations little bit of metrology little bit of navigation if you clear that paper now they 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 will have certain limitations like we'll take top 100 or we'll take top 500 or top 200 so that is where you will see even after having cpl even after having type rating if you don't have technical general knowledge then you will be forced to take extra classes just to learn technical general before you can go for airline entry exams so there is a separate set of existing pilots who have already got the cpl who who still just learn technical general so that they can prepare for this airline interviews and airline exams and you know how rare it is to get vacancies in tough times in good times okay once a year twice a year thrice a year we can get vacancies those times are going to come so now what is my strategy to teach you all technical general we will not take it up as a 3 month lecture uh, 3 month training course or a 2 month training course like we do with navigation or regulations or metrology we will keep it strategically placed once in a week or twice in a week or maybe once in two weeks and slow and steady we will learn it over a period of a long time slow and steady it could be that you might you it, you might go for your flying and still we would be learning little by little technical general that could also be possible why will we do that we will do that so that by the time you are we will do that so that you have fresh knowledge for a long time so that by the time your job applications come you should not feel like oh i had studied technical general 2 years ago i have forgotten everything i want to do it again okay so you'll be very comfortable with it because it's all general knowledge and it is important general knowledge it will teach you about those things that regulations metrology and navigation cannot teach you about it will actually teach you about how to fly the plane it will actually teach you about how to control the aircraft it will actually teach you about what are the parts that help you turn the aircraft help you move the aircraft help you lift the aircraft what are the principles behind lift why the aircraft lifts off we won't say lift off in like we say for rocket no but how does the aircraft actually lift itself all that knowledge is important you might be thinking sir i'll become a cpl and i'll get all the knowledge i don't need to learn it right now no when you go to flying schools you will not be taught all this maybe 10% or 20% maybe 30% max you will learn to fly a plane but you will not know the theory behind it we need to know the theory it is for our own knowledge eventually you have to go through this eventually you have to learn everything so technical general has three sides okay 
द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट द फिजिक्स ऑफ लाइट एरोडाइनमिक्स लाइक नेहा सेट इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस principles of flight aerodynamics talks about all forces on an aircraft what is lift what is drag what is thrust you need to know aerodynamics will talk about parts of aircraft known as primary control surfaces very important like a car has a steering wheel to turn right and left and an accelerator to move forward how do we move the aircraft primary control surfaces very important what are these primary control surfaces i'll just write down elevators ailerons and rudder then you'll also learn about what is the most important thing after primary control surfaces to fly the aircraft secondary control surfaces the secondary control surfaces what do we get we get flaps tabs slats slots and so on much more are you following students what i'm talking about principles of flight actually talks about how to fly the airplane and how the airplane flies how to fly the airplane and how the airplane actually flies it will not talk about atmosphere and mass of air and all the gases but it will talk about the effect of air on the wing of the aircraft so you will talk about wing of the aircraft you will talk about something known as center of pressure you will talk about something known as angle of attack you will talk about something known as stability and most important stall stability stability is like something coming to automatic balance on its own like this is the aircraft a sudden gust of wind comes it is pitching me down but automatically because of the construction of the airplane and this part over here my airplane becomes stable on its own this is stability like my aircraft is coming it's oscillating for some reason and then it's damping the oscillation and becoming stable again these are all your essential topics these are all your major topics in your principles of flight then most importantly principles of flight what will it talk about further there would be a few more things that we are not discussing here but all these points you have to master all these points as basics now let's say that right now varad has a backdrop picture which is an i think neo right airbus 321 neo or 320 neo looking at that aircraft i can remind myself about all these points respected to uh, related to that aircraft because i have studied it 
you have to reach that level any time you look at the aircraft i know these are the wings here are my flaps here are my ailerons this is my wing tip these are my elevators this is my rudder and these are my stabilizers basic parts of the aircraft then we talk about how to control the aircraft so how to control the aircraft we understand with the help of all the three axes of the aircraft longitudinal axis lateral axis vertical axis all these three axes of the aircraft very important now sparsh is watching the video on youtube and sparsh is asking me angle of attack is the angle between the nose of the aircraft and the longitudinal axis no that is not angle of attack that is pitching angle or pitching moment so you might be wondering what is it you will talk about the most important thing in aerodynamics what is known as aerofoil aerofoil will have points like cord line and cp that is center of pressure you might be thinking sir stop it now we are not understanding anything everything is going above our heads if that's the case don't be scared eventually you have to study all this it's basic general knowledge right now i am introducing it to you i'm i'm talking about what's in store for you and a few more things angle of attack is the angle between the relative airflow and the cord line of the wing or the airfoil now what is this airfoil some students might have seen it in some of the lectures i would have introduced but this airfoil is the cross section of your wing of the aircraft and this airfoil is the design that actually enables the aircraft to lift up so when we talk about the airfoil the cord line the center of pressure which is cp we talk about what is known as bernoulli's principle and we talk about law of continuity all these elements together will give you a base level cpl level knowledge of principles of flight that is one aspect of technical are you following students that is one aspect of technical and we'll study it gradually for knowledge not to clear exams but for knowledge whenever this you will be if you are continuing with this plan that i have a slow and a gradual growth for technical once in a week or once in two weeks or sometimes just two classes in a month however it's feasible compared to other topics and your pressure for other topics or other subjects we will be continuing series of lectures by the name batch delta 22 d22 so remember that if you want to be in sequence for your future references students we are thinking long term right now and i'll ensure that technical general does not take your crucial time to study important papers required for cpl issue okay but i don't want you all to miss the opportunity to pick up technical right now before it's too late after 2 years so i want to give you the best of both and that's my plan we have one question from varad center of pressure acts in pitch of moment mm. yes and no varad okay pitch pitching moment center of pressure somewhere center of pressure helps you in pitching up but then the center of pressure is something to do with the aerofoil so center of pressure actually helps you with lift and then the lift will definitely not necessarily give you pitching moment because pitching moment is also controlled by your elevators so it's partially right partially wrong you're thinking in the right direction is what we can say not wrong partially complete partially incomplete mohammad azam please go ahead 
So like aerodynamics, now which you have mentioned a few points, right? In aeronautical engineering also, we have aerodynamics. Every point you have mentioned in that. Will it be helpful? It is almost similar or it's exactly the same? All these points will always be there in aeronautical engineering also. But the approach to study is very different. In aeronautical engineering, you will be talking about a lot of mathematics. A lot of mathematics. In CPL studies, hardly 5% of that math will be there. Hardly 5%. The topics are same, everything is same, but when you will compare the same topic in the nautical book and your book, CPL book, you will see that the words are different, the language is different, everything is different, but they're talking about the same concept. It will be helpful if you have already studied it, definitely. Because but I've already studied and cleared in engineering, we have that. Yes, it will be helpful, but... Can you rely on that knowledge to clear your technical CPL? No. No, not on that knowledge. But mm -hmm. if, if we have studied that now, maybe this will be a little bit easier for us to be, understand easily. Not just little bit, very much. Trust me, you will always have an upper hand in aerodynamics. Because what other people will not know, you will already know. You will be like, this is so easy. Okay, so these are the terms. It will definitely be very helpful. Your job would be to find the missing pieces to be able to convert it to your aviation perspective. That's it. For you, it becomes like that. But a nautical, of course, a nautical will not majorly talk about controlling the aircraft or stabilizing the aircraft. I have seen the books. I have one, one of my favorite books here. I'll just show you all one second. Okay. And this also is not a very technical book. It's one of our favorite uh, principles of flight book known as mechanics of flight. Many engineering students, aircraft maintenance engineering students use this. Uh, I think the brightness is too much. So even in this book, half of the topics have a lot of, uh, what do we say, math. But all that math is not related to us. But math like formula for weight is lift coefficient half rho v square surface of the wing that is what you will be learning it will be easy for you much more easier for you students here i'll show you something very olden jetpack can you see this two people on a jetpack in olden days these days jetpacks are a reality but these are the developing stages of jetpacks can you see it these are two people and there are two cylinders, two engine-like things. Rocket propulsion. But sadly, this book got wet due to water and its condition is ruined, you know. Okay, coming back to the points. See, I was talking about tabs. Principles of light, they are showing you how tabs are controlled. What is the control mechanism of tabs? And so on. Students, there's one interesting documentary, although it's very sad. Uh, I think it's on, I think it's on one of the OTT platforms known as the downfall of Boeing. Okay. Tabs are secondary control surfaces. Tabs are easy to move. When we move a tab, it affects the primary control surfaces. It reduces the pressure on the pilot. So when you go through that documentary, the downfall of Boeing, okay, I forgot the exact name. It talks about the two recent air crashes of the new aircraft that Boeing had made, Boeing 737 MAX. And um, yeah, you should check it out. You should check it out. You will be surprised. I'll share this insight with you. When I was watching it, and I don't, I, I try not to watch a lot of things, okay? But I thought, let's just watch what it is about because I don't believe Boeing can ever have a downfall. You know, Boeing is such a great company. And uh, then why are they talking about this? So it's not a downfall. Of course, Boeing is in existence. 737 MAX is a successful plane. So many planes are in. They had been banned for a couple of years because of two accidents back to back. Those accidents should not have happened. So when I was going through the 
uh, the documentary, they used a term. Okay. And uh, when I heard the term, I thought that I'm falling behind my current knowledge in aviation as an individual. Okay. I felt bad thinking that I cannot do this. I need to know. I need to know everything, right? Because that's my job. So how do I not know about that one element? I was shocked. I was like, when did this come? And where was I? Why do I not know about the system? Because for me, practically, I know everything. Getting it. Not a ratified memory, of course, but understanding of everything. You will be surprised. The pilots who were flying Boeing 737 MAX, even they didn't know about that system. Boeing didn't tell about that system to anyone. They just introduced a system and they hid, they hid it from everyone. And that's the reason why two accidents happened. Fatal accidents. Are you listening to what I'm saying, students? Um, Boeing, Boeing hid it. They just simply hid it. They hid it to avoid training costs. They hid it to make sure the max production comes right on time as a competition to Airbus 320 NEO. So we are not at fault. They did that. They should not have done that. It's a system they didn't introduce. The whole aviation world was shocked. What is this new system? Where is this coming from? And why are we not told about it? We are smiling, but so many people and the first crash was flown by an Indian pilot. It's very bad. But anyway, it, you feel good about having the knowledge is what I'm trying to say, because it's universal knowledge. Are you getting it? And whoever designed that system, I know this is going online and someday somebody can catch hold of this. Whoever designed the system, they didn't make it fail, full, uh, fail safe. They didn't make it foolproof. And when you watch the documentary, you'll realize they had to make that adjustment to attach new aircrafts to the existing Boeing, uh, new engines to the existing Boeing 737. They counteracted one problem, but they didn't, th they didn't think about what if this, this new solution creates a new problem. And that's how everything is designed in aviation. So when you see the documentary, you will see the looks on actual faces of actual people. They will have the same look that I have, maybe more shocking look than they have. It's, it's the real thing. Like what, how, how is it possible? How could they do it? So that's why I'm saying students, you are not just studying to get some graduation done or get a certificate. This is your life. This is your career. You need to have this information and, and technical general is at the core of everything else. The second aspect of technical general is power plant. When I say power plant, it means engines. Now, this again is a complete different world, students. Engineering students, students having background in engineering, you know a lot of internal combustion engines. You know about jet engines, jet propulsion that is going to help you definitely. In engines, you have piston engines, simple. You have jet engines, two basic divisions. These piston engines are in your Cessnas, smaller aircrafts. Along with engines, you get propellers. You get turbojet engines. You get turbofan engines. You get turbo shaft engines. You get variable propellers, variable pitch propellers. Laws of gases, because air is a gas. How these engines generate thrust. And most importantly, SFC. 
स्पेसिफिक फ्यूल कंजम्पशन विच इंजिन यूजेस द लीस्ट फ्यूल टू गिव मी द मैक्सिमम डिस्टेंस फ्लोन स्पेसिफिक फ्यूल कंजम्पशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर कमर्शियल एविएशन देन हाउ विल माई इंजिन्स फेल for jet engines engine failures happen through what is known as stall and surge so this stall and the aerodynamic stall in principles of flight is the same stall mohammad azam do you have any idea about power plants have you studied it yes sir tell me a brief in short what have you studied and the working principles like different different aircraft different different engines like you have turbo fan turbo shaft specific sf sfc specific fuel consumption like which engine like whatever you are saying almost we have studied everything but i doesn't know exactly where how what are the specifications in uh, technical general whereas in aeronautical it's like complete about engines we have in engines we go with everything sir from the pistol engine to a turbojet engine everything correct there are more pointers students but these are main pointers what are more pointers when you talk about turbine engines or turbojet engine so you need to know why are they called turbojet what is a turbine you need to talk about newton's laws so here in engines what gives you what is the purpose of engines thrust so you study about thrust and what gives you thrust newton's law newton's first law second law third law all three laws are actually applicable in aviation but actual thrust is obtained by newton's third law and still all these points if you cover up students your understanding will be basic level and that is mandatory in a jet engine there is a turb uh, there is a fan inlet there are compressors first stage second stage low pressure compressor high pressure compressor combustion chamber types of combustion chamber fuel air mixture turbine exhaust material of turbine temperature limit of the engine structure all this is super exciting students really it is very super exciting and once you learn and remember it these things you don't forget it's that type of knowledge sir so in this we can also mention type of fuels used right mm yeah fuel types possibly yes generally fuel air mixture rich mixture thin mixture correct for piston engines there would be things like carburetors and something or the other now the third facet or third phase of your technical general is aircraft systems for a small plane like cessna systems are very less so it is easy for students to clear technical specific paper because you have around what 100 or some odd questions and you learn and you just clear but when it comes to general technic aircraft systems what are the systems that you will get you will get systems like electrical system in electrical system you will talk about batteries you will talk about generators generators are like alternators you will talk about starters you will talk about lights you will talk about apu auxiliary power unit then you have another system known as pneumatic system pneumatic system deals with air pressure how do you get this air pressure you get it from the engine itself
air conditioning very important air conditioning is not just giving the passenger a comfortable ac environment it's not like three tier two tier or my first tier railway coach air conditioning actually gives you oxygen to breathe and maintains a ground level or a 8000 feet pressure level for you to sustain if you miss air conditioning air conditioning is basically pressurization if you miss that you will all faint due to hypoxia above 8000 10000 feet pressurization so you will see what are packs pack 1 pack 2 If you have seen ever seen a startup video of an Airbus three two zero three two one anything, you will see all the cockpit videos, the checklist, pack one, pack two. They say like that, and there is an overhead switch. What are these packs? Then of course there are hydraulic systems. What kind of hydraulic systems do you use? So what is hydraulics? Hydraulic fuel fluids. very important what is the property of hydraulics what is the property of hydraulic fluids they are non compressible they are helpful in transmission of movement all your primary control surfaces chances are they will be moved because of the help of hydraulic fluids only then you will talk about autopilot then you'll talk about transducers so when when you when you hear about fly by wire it means hydraulics are less electric wires are more and electrical impulses and currents they move the control surfaces and how is the mechanical movement made through electric current through what is known as transducers transducers are such equipments that that convert electrical energy into physical or mechanical movement so all your flaps they get extended they get retracted all your landing gears they come out they go inside how is the movement happening is it elect fly by wire is it hydraulic is it pneumatic auxiliary power unit oil system what type of oil is used and why oil is used to avoid friction oil is given for cooling of the engine also what should be the property of the oil any starter generators anything else that is important most importantly air frame when i say air frame i talk about this complete external aircraft the airframe fuel tanks fuel systems so you will be learning small aircraft large aircraft that's how you will be learning simple in general you and when you do your type rating that's when you specifically learn about all these properties about a specific aircraft final so that's your final level of mastering a particular model of the aircraft but type rating they will not spend so much of time as much as time is required in uh, technical general studies okay i have seen some people do it on a fast track basis also and that also helps but technical general is vast but it's very exciting because it's all general knowledge and you know the plan how we are going to proceed with it even if you will not be able to attend live lectures you just follow delta 22 and one by one in your sweet time keep acquiring knowledge topic by topic topic by topic topic by topic so over the period of long run you will remember a lot and by the time your interview times come you will be ready to crack those interviews simple as that that's the whole idea so the strategy will be different the lecture frequency will be different but the lectures definitely will be very interesting and then again for your atpl papers the same things with added points and a little more complications or complicated topics we should not call them complications that's the wrong attitude but just i hope you get the gist of what i'm trying to say 
okay students so this is your introduction to technical general this is what you are required to do over the period of your training a few points that i have not mentioned here don't be surprised if they come out a few points that i mentioned here might not be as lengthy as you think they might be don't think okay okay sir has given me around 30 40 points and every point will have 40 pages so 640 pages or 6000 pages no don't think like that it is easy it is doable and we will do it getting it students today we are not starting with any topic today we are not even starting with the four forces of the aircraft we will keep it for our lecture 1 when we talk about bernoulli's principle and lift generation of lift primary control surfaces so it will be an all together combined subject wherein we can discuss around 5 to 10 essential points from principles of flight so we'll divide it into modules and study in a modular way and then whenever uh, we study i'll make sure you have reading material so that you keep reading also in your free time and whenever students you are finding yourself spending time watching a lot of series and a lot of movies and instagram reels videos youtube channels this and that try to take some time out from that time and give it to reading okay a personal advice it really helps if nothing read technical now that you have started other subjects if you are too saturated saying sir class mein padhte hain aisa waisa aap kitna padhenge then at least you do technical reading and then of course you can watch videos certain pilots like mentor pilot and captain joe they all have very short videos explaining complicated topics with animations high tech videos like i wish i can make such videos you know for students to understand you can watch those videos based upon topics then although it will give you a good understanding at least if not help you clear exams it will give you understanding about the topics right so be very conscious about it enjoy this process that's it it's a short time process once you become a pilot your knowledge is going to make sure that you survive and grow for a long time got it students i have something in the chat box airbus design in a way that it could be a touch and go while attempting a belly landing as it happened in pakistan a320 crash Airbus 320 is a very safe aircraft i'm not sure about the belly landing capacities but it is possible there have been so many aircrafts where we have seen the tail touching the ground but still nothing happening to the aircraft and some of the aircrafts the tail touches the ground and the aircraft is simply bursting into flames sometimes i can say sometimes it's calculated luck also that comes into picture but nobody can guess that the only thing is you should be aware of everything and you will be successful simple as that so students any questions this is it introduction to technical general from next class whenever your technical classes we will be following the sequence delta 22 for this series and i would suggest that you all follow it through like that only even if you cannot attend live lectures you should be able to follow up and study over a long period of time make a good notebook make your good notes preserve them and keep it for later for your airline entry remember that okay everyone do we have any questions that i can answer right now Why do I feel like you are studying more students? Reverse yeah, thruster is also a topic, right? Yeah, reverse thruster will be a part of your engines. Very good. Reverse thrusters. In in aerodynamics, we can write air brakes. and of course in systems we will write landing gear systems lg see a few more points a few obvious points that i had not written down over here
Mohammad Azam is trying to think about everything that he has learned. When I was on the airport, when I just joined, you know, like we used to, I remember taking a video of a reverse thruster. An engineer was checking it on a stationary aircraft. I had uploaded it on YouTube also back then, okay, many years ago. Like YouTube was not what it is right now. It is good. Reverse thrusters, types of reverse thrusters, you will learn bucket type, fan type, there are a couple of types. But don't think that reverse thrusters will enable the aircraft to go in reverse, okay? That's not how it works. Aircraft cannot do reverse. They are just reducing the thrust, deflecting the exhaust in a different direction so we don't get extra thrust. So the thrust is reduced. And then the air brakes or spoilers, we call them, will try to stop the aircraft along with the brakes on your landing gear wheels. So there are three to four brakes acting at the same time to stop the aircraft. And do you know aircrafts like Concorde, they had parachutes also to stop them along with all the other brakes. Certain uh, racing cars students, they are also developed keeping aerodynamics in mind, but their aerodynamics is reverse aerodynamics. Instead of lifting the aircraft, their aerodynamics keeps the, uh, instead of lifting the car, their aerodynamics keeps the car stuck to the ground. And have you ever come across a car on the uh, back hatch, like whatever the storage space we have, especially on sedans, they have- We a call spoiler. Yeah, we call spoilers, yes. Those spoilers are to prevent the aircraft from lifting up, actually. Not the aircraft, but the car. They have an aerodynamic purpose, the spoilers. Otherwise, with the speed, and, and if you notice, all your racing cars are reverse aerofoils also. So when you learn about aerofoil, you will see aircraft aerofoils are like this, and aircraft supercar aerofoils are like this opposite all this you'll understand logically you won't be thought about racing cars not here in technical general but you'll understand memory items and everything related to systems hydraulics apu would be covered in technical general in technical general only technical general only specific rating on an aircraft they will only talk about exact limitations of the system, how to operate the system, how to take care of the system in time of emergency and all that. So in general, we learn about what is an APU. And when you learn about it, when you do a 320, 321 technique uh, type rating, then they'll, they'll talk about how to operate the APU. Normal times and crucial times, simple. How to fix the APU, that is not your job. Maintenance engineers will be learning that on a type rating. So they will also be going through the type rating like you. So your job is easier as a pilot. Your function is related to, your function is to fly the aircraft and you'll only be talk, learning about things with the respect of flying and what to do in adverse conditions. What about unreliable airspeed? Will we learn this in technical general or some other subject? Now, unreliable airspeed, we don't have any such term that I can think about, Laksha, unreliable airspeed, but excess airspeed and the effect of excess airspeed can result into stall. It will be taught to you in aerodynamics. It will be a part of lift. So it is a part of technical general. All right, students, welcome to the world of technical general. It's easy, it's interesting, and it's a lot of fun. And you already know the strategy. So it's not going to cause any burden on your shoulders. That is something I'm going to make sure. But the ultimate concern is to make sure you remember it for your airline entry exams. Before that, if you finish the syllabus and clear the technical general exams, nobody will be more happier than me. Simple. Okay. And
Okay. Unreliable speed indication. Correct. Unreliable speed indication is a uh, basically something wrong with your airspeed indicator or the sensors. Okay. That is possible. You will learn that in type rating also. And uh, unreliable speed indications you will not learn in technical general. You will only learn about excess speeds, not the unreliable indications. And we have one more question. Varad is asking us in the movie Sully, because of bird strike, both engine failed. But Varad is saying APU. How does APU help the aircraft to fly for some time? APU doesn't actually fly, help the aircraft to fly at all. APU just gives you some more time with respect to air conditioning, pressurization, and lights and power that power but it doesn't give you thrust so it doesn't help you fly but if your airplane is gliding like without engine power both engine fails apu will give you electricity communications radio communications see why do we call engines power plant it gives because engines give power to everything in the aircraft even the alternators generators that generate electricity and the radio power power for radio equipments everything is derived from engines only so if your engines fail everything is going to fail but apu can make sure that apart from thrust everything else can be given to the aircraft for some time as long as apu is working and yes ram air turbine two people are mentioning ram air turbine lakshay and manan yes Ram air turbine is simply a free moving windmill. Then you can lower from the belly of the aircraft and through the relative airflow, it moves and the rotatory motion generates electricity and some power for some time for you to have some power inside the aircraft, but it will not give you thrust again. Great students. I'm very happy to see. Ram air turbine cannot guide the aircraft. No, it can just give you this basic power in the aircraft, electricity and so, so such powers. It cannot give you thrust. Nukul, do you have something to ask? Uh, sir, I have seen a video in YouTube that uh, Boeing C-17 Globemaster, that is, which is a, a Air Force aircraft by USA, it has the ability to get reverse back. You know, uh, while taxing, it get back. So this system uh, can't. Uh, why they can't use this system in our general, you know, planes or uh, aviation like a Boeing three twenty or seven three seven? See, it is going to be something to do with the way the engines are in a Globemaster. Okay. If the engines and the orientation of the engine can be changed in such a way that we can change the direction of thrust, I'm not sure because I have to check how the reverse thruster or not thruster, reverse moving capacity is enabled in the Globemaster. But I think probably the engines can be rotated in such a way that the thrust could be reversed. Many aircrafts exist wherein a normal forward moving engine can be converted upwards and we get a vertical takeoff also. And after getting a vertical takeoff, the engines are moved back again and we get forward thrust like that. So I will look up to it, but why we cannot do it on Boeing 737 and 320 is because the engines can only give me thrust in this direction. That's it. And we cannot change the orientation of engine. So reverse is not a possibility and the landing gears. Even if you think about giving a mechanical drive to the landing gears to give me a reverse without the engines, maybe the Globemaster has mechanical drive given to the landing gears like a car. So I'll have to check that. That's what I'm saying. So these Airbus 320s and your Boeings, they don't have the mechanical drive to the landing gears. The landing gears are free to move. And the only other effect that is there is the effect of physical brakes. That's it. Following Nukul. Perform, sir. So please put it in the parking lot and make sure I do my, my thing and check how Globemaster is reversing. 
but i like that aircraft so can i show you right now yeah sure fine mcdu is generally the computer of an aircraft or is it just a software used for flight plan and modica- modification it's a computer it's a computer with a display and it has a lot of software and programs embedded in it nukur how are you sharing it with me Likhit, if you have come across videos reversing on their own power, please share with me. I'll tell you what's happening. Okay. I don't really see how it can happen. Possibility is that a tow truck is attached and a tow truck is pushing it in a reverse direction. So the mechanical power given to the wheels is from the tow truck. All right, students. That's it. Nukul, I'm going to check it and I'm going to get back to you on this. It's a helicopter they are talking about, planes and motorcades. Okay. So obviously, if it's a precedence aircraft, Lakshay ILS, we will learn in radio navigation. Okay, not in technical. Definitely, we'll teach you, but not now. Okay, students. That's it. I'm going to take a leave now. If you have more questions, put it in the parking lot. Make your notebook for your technical. Keep it for a long time. Do it for the knowledge and for your airline entry exams mainly. It is exciting. It is easy. It is extensive, but it will really make you feel very satisfied. Nukul, I'll get back to you and everybody on this. Give me some time to go through it. All right. and what i was saying if it's a precedence aircraft then definitely there would be certain modifications to work out in emergencies so i can guess that but i'll get back to you on that okay all right class shata yuvraj neha zai prakash lakshay likhit mohammad azam nukul varad pratik manan very happy to see all generally students think i don't want to do technical general but i'm very happy that you have this sense please never stop doing it the plan that i have is a very good plan go ahead with it it will save you a lot of future time and it'll keep you ready when opportunity strikes okay nukul i'll get back to you later okay on that okay sir don't feel bad and yes sir no yes enjoy and i'm going to see you your next week schedule will be shared with you and accordingly we will be studying our other subjects with the new schedule for the next week lakshay do you have anything to ask yes sir so do we have a rt lecture today at 8:15 yeah yeah definitely yes class we have our alpha 22 rt lecture 8:15 one hour lecture as per the schedule we will be doing phrases today okay everyone signing off finally bye everyone take care thank you sir thank you sir